105.9 FM and streaming worldwide on the WMAL app. O'Connor and Company. It's 637 on this edition of the O'Connor and Company program, Friday morning in the nation's capital. Coming up at 7.05, Adam Credo of the Free Beacon. 7.35, Phil Wegman of Real Clear Politics. 8.15, Julie Donaldson will give us a preview of the Commander's Game. And at 8.35, Brett Baer of Fox News Channel. I'm Larry O'Connor, alongside award-winning, <laughs> Christmas-decorating homeowner <laughs> in Prince George's County, Maryland, Patrice Onwuka. Good morning, Patrice. Good morning. Happy Friday, Larry. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, we are both Marylanders, mm-hmm. and so we are uh, plugged in as often as possible into what's going on in the free state. And I uh, get this. The revenue for the Maryland State Education Association, that would be the teachers union, mm-hmm. uh, they have seen an increase of revenue this last year of 34%. Wow. They have made 34% more money, the teachers union has, at a time when out of 13 Baltimore City High Schools, literally zero, zero, not one student in the Baltimore City High Schools are proficient in oh. math, according to the state standards. Joining us now is Denisha Allen, Black Minds Matter founder and also a senior fellow at American Federation for Children. All right, Denisha, uh, only only in America and certainly only in a state like Maryland, are you rewarded with that kind of revenue increase when mm. you are an abysmal failure? That is right. You know, I wish we... We all had this advantage, to be honest. You know, we could just sit back, be lazy, and just collect a big fat check without yeah. doing nothing. Mm-hmm. Um, and unfortunately, that is what the teachers union in Maryland has been doing. Like you said, they they've received thirty in the the average income um, for a Maryland employee, Maryland teachers union employee, is one hundred and eighty one dollars. That's twice the income of the average uh, lower-income family in the state of Maryland. And those numbers are even worse for uh, for families in Baltimore. And you would think to yourself, like, you know, we should be shutting them down and hmm. give that money right to students. Well, and, and Denisha, so good to talk with you. Uh, this is, th- unfortunately, it wasn't always like this. I mean, I'm, I'm reading uh, that in 2013, Maryland was ac- students were actually leading, at, at least on pace, or leading the national average when it came to fourth grade reading and math. And now it's woeful to see how students are, have have um, have fallen. Yeah. Is there any way to tie student performance? to teachers union uh, funding and accountability? You know, I really, I really hope that that's, you know, not the case. But unfortunately, you know, Project Baltimore came out with this report Mm. that has linked it. You know, they've seen that with the continual decline of student uh, uh, academic outcomes, the Maryland Teachers Union has continued to collect dollars. And they only have about 90 employees. Hmm. Their employees have, you know, the number of employees that stay consistent and the amount of money that they're collecting has continued to increase. You know, there we already know that the teachers union, Maryland teachers union, teachers unions across the country are not, they don't have students' best interest at heart, you know. They are a mm-hmm. powerful political organization yeah. that lobbying to keep kids trapped in failing schools because they do not support providing them with education opportunities through school choice. And so, you know, it's sad to think that there is some deep-seated corruption, Mm -hmm. you know, in America's schools, but you you have to kind of squinch your eye and and lean in and, and think so. Our guest is Denisha Allen. She's with American Federation for Children, which pushes for school choice legislation across the country. She's also the founder of Black Minds Matter, which is a great clearinghouse website with information about black-owned private schools that uh, clear the threshold of the organization in terms of their quality and their approach to academics. And, Denisha, I guess it's in that vein that I want to ask this question, because as Patrice just pointed out, you know, 10 years ago, Maryland schools were excelling for all races across the board. Then it seems they embraced this critical race theory thing. They've embraced the philosophy of Ibram X. Kendi about about anti-racism, about the oppressors and the oppressed, about systemic racism and equity. And so out out of the motivation 
of being anti-racist and embracing equity, they have actually destroyed yeah. the academic achievements that were being made in many black communities mm -hmm. in the state of Maryland. So I mean, it's so insidious that even if these people thought they were doing the right thing by, by saying, okay, we'll do what Ibram X. Kendi thinks we should do, they've actually failed the very students they claim they're supporting. So how do we break that? Yeah, you know, I, I'm, I preach it all the time. I say equity equals education freedom. We can't, you know, claim to be equitable for African Americans, for minority students, and not have education freedom be a part of that conversation. Mm. Because when we look at crime rates, when we look at health care disparities, all of these other housing, um, even the quality of neighborhoods and how they look and feel, it really all boils down to education. It's the bedrock of where everything starts. When you look inside of a prison, and you see that the average, you know, reading level of all the inmates is a third grade reading level. Yeah. We don't talk about that as a prevention mechanism. We're really doing a disservice to society. And that's where school choice, that's where education freedom comes in. There are a lot of programs and a lot of things that, yeah, definitely spurred um, since COVID, but even before then. And talking about wanting to help and better the African American community, insert whichever type of policy initiative or campaign, you know, that was out there. And the, the one thing that never was talked about was education and mm -hmm. reforming mm -hmm. academic outcomes for uh, African American students. And that's why I founded Black Minds Matter, because we were so interested in canceling pancakes and syrup or including another social program within our schools but not actually getting behind the science of reading yeah. and how to teach kids how to do math and equity equals education freedom you cannot talk about this term without actually educating kids and that's what you know everyone in maryland you know needs to wake up to that you know larry you you've been you know a champion for this for a long time and the more stories that come comes out all the kids in all of these schools that can't read they can't do math and now we see that the teacher unions have continued to collect the big fat check you know we really need to overhaul this system and i believe the entire country should be looking at this yeah. issue yeah. because it really shows that you know how we care about our kids and we set the precedence across the country of our um you know, our urgency around giving giving all kids a high well quality said. education. Yeah, and and now we've got a Governor Westmore who uh, campaigned on leave no one behind, and everyone's being left behind. Mm. Uh, Denisha, Moore, I, I don't know about you, but all I can think about is pancakes and syrup. Now. I don't know why you <laughs> needed to do that to me. Uh, Denisha <laughs> Allen, it's Thanks, a perfect one-two punch here with Denisha, with the American Federation for Children, and then Black Minds Matter. They're both necessary. Thanks, Denisha. Always good to talk with you. Happy uh, Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanks, guys. When you